What's up everybody, this is Zach with Top Deck Nation coming at you today with um, a video that we normally don't get to do and it's going to be a uh, kind of a set preview and a set review at the same time. Um, as you might know, or maybe you don't know, um, it is the 20th anniversary of Pokemon and you know the Pokemon company has been doing a lot of great things. Uh, throughout the year to kind of celebrate the anniversary. I know it means a lot to uh, a lot of the people that kind of grew up with it, like myself, you know, those 90s kids. But even now, um, with another generation of Pokemon uh, fans and players and such, you know, there's a lot of uh, great things happening, a lot of, uh, you know, it's just pretty much a good time to get into Pokemon. So um, there was a 20th anniversary set um, that was released this week in Japan. I think it came out today officially, but... Of course, there are going to be set leaks and card leaks and stuff, you know, vendors selling them a little bit early. So, um, yeah, I am going to go ahead and review this. I think it's just called the 20th anniversary set. I guess technically it's the uh, 12th expansion in like the XY kind of uh, arc. So it's XY 12. Um, but we will get these eventually. We're going to get these in November as a set called uh, Evolutions, I think. So um, not to be confused with Generations which is uh, the set we got before. It's its own little set. But a lot of the cards are kind of similar. You know, basically, um, you know, they're kind of newer cards um, that work in this set and this kind of format, but they, they look like older cards. So it's pretty cool. Like, as you can see right here, just kind of like a sample picture. Um, you know, if you grew up in like the 90s and played these, you know, played the original kind of base set, jungle, fossil, whatever, you can recognize these right away. I mean, there's the base set Mewtwo, the base set Polyrath, you know, it's really cool. And if you look over here, there's like, uh, you know, it's giving them like full art treatment and some extra, you know, fan service. So pretty cool. But as I said in this video, I'll try to keep it relatively short. Um, in the future, I'll have some more, you know, professional kind of quality videos, but I thought it was kind of important that we just kind of go over these and give you guys an idea of what to expect when the, uh, when the American set drops in November. So, uh, there's a lot of cool things in this set, a lot of cards that are pretty playable that I'll see competitive play. And I really like that just because, uh, you know, it's really, again, providing fan service. So being able to play, you know, your older cards in the new kind of format is really awesome. I think it's really great. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it here. So as I said, it'll be pretty informal. I'm just kind of scrolling down. And again, I'm not going to take credit for these images. They are from pokebeach.com. So check them out. Um, but yeah, so we're looking at kind of the grass Pokemon first. Um, and the first thing that's kind of striking is that they reprinted Mega Venusaur EX. He was in the XY uh, set, the base XY, I believe. So he's got that Crisis Vine attack where it says your opponent's active is now paralyzed and poisoned. So pretty good, 120 damage. That's enough to knock out things like Shaman. Um, it's basically doing 130 because it's poisoning. So things like, uh, you know, the baby Evil Tall and a few other things, it can easily knock those out. I think Volcanion. Um, and it is going to be paralyzing, and that's a pretty big deal because, uh, you know, in a format where we don't really play a whole lot of Switch cards, we rely on things like Floatstone, um, you know, AZ is rotated, Super Scoop Up is rotated, uh, Paralysis is a lot stronger. So, um, and the great thing about this, uh, and my, uh, my friend, we used to joke about this. Um, you know, when he first started playing the game, he really, really wanted Venusaur to work, but it wouldn't because it was so slow. It was a mega. Uh, the cool thing about this, and I'll be scrolling back and forth uh, between these if I can find it, um, we actually get a Spirit Link for a lot of these cards, including, you know, the elusive Venusaur Spirit Link that they should have printed originally. You know, they, they really should have done that. I guess they thought Megas were too powerful, but then they kind of realized, hey, you know, players are not going to play these because you have to waste a turn. You have to put a bunch of energy on them. So it's great to see Spirit Links. And again, we are seeing those for a lot of Pokemon here. We have a Charizard Spirit Link with that beautiful artwork. And then I believe there's a Blastoise Spirit Link as well. So pretty awesome. Um, so, I mean, Venusaur might see play with something like Vileplume. I can see, uh, you know, some kind of really fast deck where you just power up Venusaur and... You know, maybe mid game or so, you get the vile plume out, and you essentially lock your opponent in. So, um, you know, you paralyze them, you take a knockout, maybe they hit you a little bit, and then you just rinse and repeat essentially. So, you never know; it could be good. And then the Venusaur here is just a reprint as well. I think it was a promo. Um, we see Caterpie and Metapod, pretty cool that they're the original base set, but unfortunately, they're not that great. Um, and I'm not sure why they didn't re uh, didn't print Butterfree. 
Um, it would have been cool to see that, but it's okay. Um, let's see. So we see a Beedrill line, and this Beedrill line is interesting. Not so much the Weedle and Kakuna, they're just kind of reprints. But this Beedrill here, um, you know, essentially they just kind of, you know, gave it like a power curve here, and it's a lot stronger than it was before. So it's got free retreat, pretty cool. It's grass type, so it can evolve turn one using force of giant plants. But look at these attacks here. Um, poison Sting, 30 damage and now poison. So pretty efficient, not great, great. But this second attack here is really, really good. Swarming Sting, that this attack does 40 damage um, times the number of Beedrill you have in play to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So if I have four Beedrill in play, and not the EX, but Beedrill specifically, that's 160 damage. And I can do that to any of my opponent's Pokemon. So uh, maybe I can hit their Shaman every turn. Maybe I can hit their, you know, Manaphy EX if it's like a water deck. You know, anything um, that I can knock out really easily. And this is going to be big. Now, it does take two energy, but that's okay because, you know, we can play experience share. We don't have to worry about it getting knocked off because there are no tool cards. Uh, there are no tool removal cards like Startly Megaphone anymore. Uh, Tangela, not so great, of course. Um, you know, one of the highlights of the set is that you get the base set Charizard. Now, back in the day, you know, I remember being seven, eight, nine years old. And, you know, Charizard, if you had it, <laughs> you were pretty much like the coolest kid in like elementary or middle school. And it's ironic because he wasn't even, you know, remotely playable. You know, if you wanted something playable and competitive, you know, you went and tried to get the, you know, uh, Electabuzz and Scyther, the Haymaker decks, the Rain Dance decks, maybe Alakazam if you like that kind of like damage swap stuff. But Charizard, he wasn't all that playable, but he might be now. Uh, all energy attached to this Pokemon are fire energy. That's his energy burn ability. It's really good. And then he has a whopping 200 damage. Now you got to you have to discard three energy, but I mean overall, I mean if you just look at this, the power creep is pretty you know evident here. He's got 150 HP. He keeps that fighting resistance. He's doing 200 a turn for a non EX, and because he's a fire type, you can just abuse Blacksmith with it. Now uh, Blacksmith will have to get rotated. Um, you know I wouldn't be surprised if it happened in Evolutions when we get it in November, but. Um, otherwise, I don't know how playable Charizard is going to be. I mean, I guess you can attach two double colorless to it, but um, as you can see, eventually, I'm going to show you this Raticate. Raticate is going to keep a lot of these special energy attackers in check, and then not to mention hammers and stuff are a big thing, so hard to see how playable Charizard will be. There's a reprint of Charizard EX, and I think they're going to reprint another one later this year, um, but Mega Charizard, uh, if you like Charizard, then this is definitely your set. Mega Charizard does a whopping 300 damage, but it does 50 damage to itself. So uh, it's pretty balanced because of that. Like, yeah, it's doing a bunch of damage, but he might just get knocked out next turn, unfortunately. Um, but he does have a Spirit Link now, so that's pretty cool. And that means you can, uh, in Expanded, play the Dragon Mega Charizard with a Spirit Link. So there'll be a lot of interesting shenanigans. And keep, uh, keep in mind here, the Clawits are from... Uh, what is it? Steam Siege? It has that ability where you can attach energy every turn. So kind of energy acceleration. So um, that might be something that pops up and that would work with Venusaur as well. Uh, Ninetales gets a break and the stage one is reprinted. So abduct, you know, choose your opponent's bench Pokemon and switch it. So it's like a Lysander and then they can't retreat. And then the attack's okay, you know, 120 damage, but the break is pretty interesting as well. 10 damage, discard all fire energy and it does 60 more for each one you discard that's pretty brutal so if i discard three energy it's doing 190 damage but again their evolutions are hard to get out there is no blacksmith in the format so i don't know how it's going to get accelerated um arcanine is pretty good that ability burning road lets you uh move as many fire energy as you like to it when it becomes your active so Again, you know, I see so many fire types that could be playable, but we really need Blacksmith back in the format. We need something. I mean, I guess Max Elixir works, but Blacksmith is what we really, really need. Uh, Ponyta, it's kind of weird. They didn't reprint uh, Rapidash. That's kind of strange. I don't, I think, I think Rapidash was in the base set. I can't remember, but I think it was. Uh, Magmar, of course, this isn't the, the one from Haymaker because that was in Fossil, but you never know, it might get reprinted eventually. I don't know. Maybe there'll be like a, a sequel to like the 20th anniversary collection or something. Uh, Blastoise EX got reprinted. It's from the, uh, the the XY set, I think, and it got a promo. Uh, but we see Mega Blastoise EX, 
And I was really excited to play this originally, but of course you needed a spirit link. It's a mega. So, um, wasn't all that playable, but you never know now it has rough seas. You might see this in like a water box deck. Of course, uh, it does 30 to two your bench Pokemon or your opponents. So you can kind of set up for those double knockouts. Uh, Polyrath is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, 50 damage for one energy. If it became your active, it has 50 more, but the second attack is kind of underwhelming. Um, and this is what I'm saying, you know, a lot of these evolutions, they're so close to being playable, but not quite, you know, they need something to kind of put energy on the board. And especially these water Pokemon, unfortunately, the rain dance chart, uh, Blastoise up here, it didn't get a reprint. You know, everybody was really hyped about it and I thought they were going to reprint it. Um, you know, essentially the one from boundaries cross that set from a couple of years ago had the same ability. So I was really hoping they'd kind of do that again, but I, you know, I'm kind of sad that they didn't. Um, Starmie gets pretty special treatment here. Uh, the abilities changed. Um, I don't think it had an ability before. Let you discard a card from your hand and get two basic energies and put them back in your hand. So it's kind of like an energy retrieval as an ability. So could be good in something like Greninja. I don't know, maybe like a one, one line, uh, Starmie break is really good here. Potentially for one energy, it does a hundred damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon break. So if I'm playing against a Greninja break, um, I could take this in my Greninja deck and essentially knock out all of their breaks in two turns. And that is, that's really huge. So, um, you never know. It could be pretty good. Uh, Gyarados, I like, um, uh, Ma Magikarp is basically the same. Gyarados is pretty cool because of that second attack here, 180 damage. But keep in mind, you have to flip two coins and if either are tells, it does nothing. So, I mean, um... <laughs> It does a bunch of damage, you know, it gains some HP and stuff, but it only has a 25% chance of actually hitting. So, um, I mean, I guess if trick coin was legal, you could do a flip, but again, you got to power it up somehow. So, uh, Pikachu is basically the same. It has a little more HP. Raichu, uh, has that discharge attack, lets you power it up and then it does 70 damage and 70 more if you discard an energy. So not bad, pretty good. Um, I just don't know if it's doing quite enough damage, you know, something like Raikou from, uh, I can't even remember the set it came from. I, I think it was breakthrough. Raikou is probably a better attacker. You know, it's kind of like Keldeo with that secret sword kind of attack. Um, let's see, we have Magneton. Uh, looks like Magneton's a bit overwhelming self-destruct 80 damage, which isn't bad, but it knocks itself out <laughs> and that's not good. Giving up a prize to do a little bit of damage. Uh, Electrode, I am really excited about Electrode. You know, once per turn, it's got that same buzz zap ability. And, you know, it's interesting because in the base set, you know, we kind of overlook those cards and think, oh, well, I mean, they're kind of bad compared to new cards, but, um, it's a really interesting format. And, you know, three-time world champion, Jason Klasinski, he has a word, uh, WordPress blog, and I'll try to link it in the description, but he covers these really old formats like base set, base through jungle, base through fossil, etc. And, you know, it's really kind of like eye opening to see like how complex that format was. Everybody kind of assumes it's like, oh, I'm going to play four gusts of wind for energy removal and it's going to go by really quickly, but it's really uh, strategy based. So uh, check out that uh, blog if you want to. But it's uh, Electrode's Buzz App says you can knock it out and attach it as a special energy uh, to one of your lightning Pokemon, and it counts as two lightning energies. So, um, I mean, that's a good way to power up some kind of Pokemon. I'm not really sure what. I'll have to kind of look at the, the other cards that are in the format, but I'm sure there's something it has a lot of synergy with. Um, probably some sort of non-EX. Uh, Electabuzz is basically the same thing. I really like Electabuzz. Great in those Haymaker decks. Um, you know, such a really good card back in the day. Um, but Zapdos may have a little bit of synergy with the Electrode. Um, it does 170 damage for four energy, and then you have to discard all four. So maybe with something like Max Elixir and the Electrode, you can just start pulling off these big attacks. You know, keep in mind, 170 is kind of like the magic number. It's one-shotting a lot of those Pokemon EX. It's one-shotting, you know, Evil Tall EX, uh, Mega Rayquaza EX, a bunch of stuff like that. So it could be good. Uh, we see Nidoqueen, or Nidoking, I should say. I don't think Nidoqueen is in the set. But it has that uh, Tell Swing attack. It has 100 and then 20 to each of your opponent's bench basics. So pretty good. I wish Dimension Valley was in the format, so that way it would only take two energy instead of three. 
But, um, you know, I'm really hoping they reprint a lot of those cards. And it looks like it does get a break. So it does 120 damage, and then your opponent's active is poisoned. But they take two damage counters instead of one between turns. So that's pretty good. Again, I mean, if it had Dimension Valley, it would be a little bit better, but um, we can see why it is pretty good. It does 140, essentially, so not not bad. It's got 180 HP, but, you know, again, like Greninja and a few others, it's essentially a Stage 3, so it's going to be hard to get out. Um, there's nothing, you know, unfortunately, Nidorino doesn't have something like Frogadier, like, uh, like a Water Duplicates attack to get them out quickly, so, you know, I, it might be just kind of like a fan service thing. I don't know for sure. <clears throat> and we do see a Haunter. Um, Haunter is pretty cool. It uh, puts your opponent's active to sleep, and it's got Dream Eater. Um, I mean, this could pair up with the Gengar that's in Breakthrough, I guess, but it's hard to say. Um, we see Drowsy. We don't see Hypno. Um, it's interesting because a lot of these uh, Pokemon, you don't actually see you know, their evolution, so it makes me wonder why that is. Um, we'll skip past Coffee, and we see Mewtwo and Mewtwo EX, which is... Uh, you know, really awesome artwork here. Mewtwo is similar to the one in, uh, you know, the base set, but the attack is a little bit better. It's like a toned down X ball, 20 damage for each energy attached to the opponent's active Pokemon. So not, not bad. could be good for a DCE. Um, you know, definitely can hit Mega Mewtwo X for, uh, Mega Mewtwo Y for weakness. And then barrier, you know, you're basically, uh, blocking effects of attacks, including damage, but you can't use it during your next turn. And, of course, you can get around it with something like Pokemon Ranger. Um, Mewtwo EX gets three attacks, which is pretty cool. Um, energy Absorption, it's like the promo from back in the day. And then it does uh, 110 damage. So, um, I mean, the second attack is pretty good. The third attack, it's just it needs so much energy to power up. I don't know if it'll be worth it. But it does one-shot a lot of, uh, you know, psychic types. So it could be pretty good. And then we see the uh, the Mew, which is the you know the beautiful art uh, lily pad Mew from back in the day. I know a lot of players were kind of looking for this back in the day. It was a pretty expensive card, um, and I used to think uh, back in the day when I was little that this effect basically said like prevent all effects from like everything. So, I mean, I I used to think it was a lot more powerful back then, but it is ev evolutions. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because there are a lot of playable evolutions and it could paralyze your opponent, but I think it's really just there because that ability is pretty good. Um, again, we don't get a Sand Slash. Um, I think the Diglett is okay, you know, as long as this Pokemon's on your bench, prevent all damage. So that's really similar to the Squirtle from Boundaries Crossed. I think it had some sort of uh, Shell something ability. It basically did the same thing. So maybe they're... Uh, kind of encouraging you to kind of play some sort of Doug Trio deck. Uh, it does 130 damage, 20 to each of your bench Pokemon. So not very good if you're, um, you know, you don't want to damage your Pokemon. But I guess your Diglets won't get hit. So I just kind of thought about that. So, I mean, you never know. It could be pretty good. Um, we see a Machamp and a Machamp Break. And that looks really awesome. He's like a pro wrestler or something. Um, he has that ability, Machamp Strikes Back, just like in the original um, but it's a little bit different. If this Pokemon is active and it's damaged, then you put 30 damage on your opponent's Pokemon. So you're punishing, you know, your opponent for hitting you. And then Machamp has, uh, the break has that Lasso Boomerang, 100 damage, and then next turn does 100 more. So essentially, after you use it one time, it's going to be doing 200 a turn, which is awesome. Um, but again, it's a stage three. It's so hard to get out. I mean, I guess you could use like Maxi's Hidden Ball trick to get out Machamp. And then evolve it turn uh, turn two into the break, but it's I I don't know I mean I think there needs to be something to kind of you know push these guys and get them out quicker. I mean I guess we have Wally, but um, I don't know. I mean they have these high energy costs, so I wish the breaks were a little more rewarding, especially since they're non EXs, they're stage two, stage threes. But it's hard to say. Um, we see Onyx, so that's a pretty cool reprint. We see Hitmonchan from that Haymaker. Um, deck and it's basically similar. It's got that jab attack, which I I think jab did twenty back in the day. Thirty would have been really really busted, um, and then special punch for ninety. So not bad. Clefairy, um, 
I don't think the first attack is good, but the second attack is interesting. You know, Metronome, she's one of your opponent's po uh, active Pokemon's attacks and use it. So it's very splashable because it's a colorless attack. Um, you know, I can just kind of imagine this in a deck, uh, maybe against like a Giratina EX. You know, it's hitting it for weakness and it's going to use Chaos Will to knock out Giratina. And then suddenly they can't play things like their Stadium and Double Dragon, etc. So pretty good. Uh, Pidgeot EX, I'm glad they made a Pidgeot. It's really awesome looking. Um, you know, again, kind of like fan service. I wish they would have made more like this, like, um, you know, a lot of great Pokemon from Gen 1, but Pidgeot is, you know, Pidgeot's really nice because it does have a Mega, and it's one of those Pokemon where probably everybody had it back in the original game, but it has Mimic. If it was damaged, uh, by an attack during your opponent's last turn, it does the same amount of damage, so that's pretty interesting. So, you can pretty much tank with it. I mean, you could play something like Max Potion with it, and... Say something does like 150 damage to you. Well, let's, you know, let's heal off that damage and do 150 damage back to something else. So pretty cool. Um, let's see. Mega Pidgeot. It does 130 damage. It has that mock cyclone attack. And it switches your opponent's active with something else. So um, it's kind of just, I don't know how good that is. It's kind of making them switch out. But at that point, um, you know, if it let you kind of bring up something like a Lysander, it might be a little bit better. Um, now, I do want to talk about this. We have a Rattata, and it's got this, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, fa uh, Facetish Fang, I guess. Um, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto the bench, you may discard all tools attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, um, at first, it sounds pretty good. It's like, oh, I can bring up uh, Garbodor and knock off the tool, but... Um, the keep in mind, this is an ability. So Garbodor is already shutting you off. So a lot of players thought, you know, Hey, this could be a counter to Garbodor. It removes tools, but not exactly. I mean, this might be good against something, uh, that's using like a fighting fury belt to get like cheap knockouts or make it a little easier to get a knockout. But, um, unfortunately we really need an answer to Garbodor, whether it be a Zerosic reprint or startling megaphone tool scrapper or something like that. Um, I do like this Raticate a lot. If you remember the Drift Blim, I think it was from Plasma Blast. It had an attack where um, it did 50 damage times the number of special energy in your opponent's discard. And this is really similar. Um, so first of all, Crunch isn't bad. 10 damage and knock off an energy. That's that's not even bad. Um, but Bite from the Shadows, 60 damage times the number of special energy in your opponent's discard. That is... That's really good. Now, you know, say my opponent has three special energy in their discard. Well, suddenly Raticate, I can just fit it in any deck because it's colorless. It is 180 damage for a little Raticate, 60 HP. I mean, that is, um, you wouldn't think the little guy packed so much of a punch, but you never know. I mean, this could be pretty splashable in any deck. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I mean, a lot of decks play special energy, you know, Evil Tall, Giratina, Mega Rayquaza, everything does. So be on the lookout for that. Um, Farfetch'd, it's got Leak Slap, 50 damage, pretty good, pretty efficient, but it can't use it during the next turn, so don't really know how good that is. Um, Chansey, they essentially kept the same, but they changed the retreat cost from 1 to 3 for some reason. Um, I mean, I guess technically it's Heavy Ball searchable now, but, um, I don't really know if you'd ever really use it. I mean, the attacks aren't that great, so I don't know. Porygon's pretty interesting here because it has, uh, this conversion attack, which is kind of like the base set. You choose a type, and basically the, the uh, defending Pokemon's weakness is that type until the next turn. So that's uh, that's pretty cool, I guess. I mean, I guess if you can like lock them in, maybe play like a Vileplume deck, retreat the Porygon, bring up something, get a knockout, kind of do it over and over. Uh, maybe you can play Ninja Boy or something. I don't know. Um, Dragonite is going to probably see quite a bit of play here. It has this ability called Elevation. When you put it on the hand... Uh, Put it from your hand to the bench, search your discard for up to two basics, and put them in your hand. So um, this could be pretty good in the Night March deck, although you might just want to play something like Buddy Buddy Rescue. But it opens up a lot of possibilities here. Um, you know, maybe you can play thinner Pokemon lines or something, but to be able to put basic Pokemon just back in your hand at will, that's pretty good. And then the attack isn't horrible. I mean, it's got uh, 130 damage. And it discards an energy. So, I mean, guaranteed energy removal is pretty good, especially in this format. 
Uh, we see a ton of the old like trainers reprinted as items now. Super Potion's pretty good. That was already in the format. A lot of these are already in the format. I don't think Revive was though, but I could be wrong. Put a basic from your discard into the bench, so that's pretty good. Uh, De-Evolution Spray, it's going to be around for a while. Full Hill. Uh, Pokedex is pretty good. Um, and then we go to the Spirit Links. So, of course, Pidgeot, Blastoise, Venusaur, Charizard, they all get Spirit Links. Um, now, this is interesting. So, um, in the original base set, you had Professor Oak. And it was really good, four of in pretty much any deck, because uh, you discard your hand and draw seven cards. And that's just like Professor Sycamore, Professor Juniper. Uh, you know, essentially, that card kind of like stayed in the game forever. Um but back in the day, there were no supporters. So, I mean, I could play four Professor Oaks in a turn and draw 28 cards. And that's not even counting things like Bill and Computer Search. So, I mean, I could burn through the deck easily. But now it's more balanced because it's a supporter. But this is not the same effect. So this one has the same artwork, but it's called Professor Oaks Hint, not Professor Oak. And it says, draw cards until you have seven cards in your hand. And then if you use it, your turn ends. So... I don't think this is very playable. I don't know why they would print this. Um, it's exactly the same effect as a tropical beach, which is going, you know, going for like a hundred plus dollars. You know, it's good in some decks and expanded, you know, like primal Groudon, things like that. But I, it's kind of like a tease. I mean, why wouldn't they just kind of release tropical beach again or something with the same effect? I don't really know. Um, and again, we see reprints of, you know, Misty's Determination. I, you know, people haven't really found a way to play it yet, but I'm sure you will. Maybe like a Vileplume deck where you don't want to discard everything, but you just need a single card or so. Um, Brock's Guts is pretty interesting. Um, if you remember Flower Shop Lady, it's kind of like a souped up version. Shuffle six of any combination of Pokemon basic energy from your discard back in your deck. So it's like you're playing two super rods, except it's a supporter. So... I mean, if you don't really want to, you know, waste your super odd, if you're afraid it's going to get discarded, you could play this and that way, you know, you'll always have access thanks to something like Verse Seeker. Um, double colorless energy and no, it does not provide two chicken nuggets. <laughs> um, it's just kind of a joke on Poke Beach's part here. Um, I'm glad to see double colorless reprinted. You know, we, we need to keep this in the format. It's really healthy in my opinion. Um, helps a lot. A lot of cards become more playable. Then, then we just kind of look at these full arts here. I mean, really pretty full arts, great artwork. We uh, we see, you know, we finally see full arts for the Megas, which is pretty awesome. Um, I think we already have this one. I'm not really, I could be wrong, but I think this was in like a set, like one of the Generations boxes or something. Um, and wow, I mean, that, that full art Charizard is really good. And I can probably tell you, um, it looks like it's a secret rare. I can probably tell you that these are going to be money cards. So... Um, if you're looking to collect these, I mean, these are the ones you need to go after. Get these secret rares. They're really pretty. Um, they're relatively playable. So, I mean, go ahead and get those. Uh, we see Blastoise. I think he was in a Generations box. Uh, the Full Art Blastoise, you know, again, beautiful card. Looks really great. Um, Pikachu, pretty awesome looking. Um, he's got like the whole electric gang in the background. He was also in a Generations box. Um, full art Mewtwo. I'm definitely going to get one of these. Mewtwo is my favorite Pokemon. He's really cool. Um, you know, ever since I watched the first movie, I mean, he was just, you know, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Um, and you know, why not? I mean, he's essentially the strongest and, you know, pretty much all the generations in my opinion. And, um, you know, it's great to see, you know, that fan service, he's got a full art. So, and a secret rare nonetheless. So I'm going to try to pick one of those up, of course. Uh, Full Art Pidgeot looks really good, just kind of soaring through the skies. Mega Pidgeot looks like it's kind of like diving down to attack something, so it's ready for battle. Looks really good. Uh, Dragonite, I love that gold background. He's just kind of standing his ground and, you know, asserting that, you know, he's a pretty awesome, pretty big Pokemon ready to battle. Um, and I like to see these Full Arts of these trainers here. Misty looks great. Uh, Brock looks really cool. It looks like he's ready for a gym battle. Um, and then we come down to the last few cards here. So Exeggutor, um, I don't think it really will see play, but I think it's just kind of, um, it might be a reprint of like a really old card in Japan uh, that maybe just didn't make it to America. Um, and of course, in the background, if you assume this is like another Exeggutor, I mean, there's your there's your Alola form Exeggutor back then. So a lot of people are kind of playing around with the notion that, you know, um, in Jungle and all those older sets, 
that, you know, it kind of like hinted at the Alolan Exeggutor. I mean, maybe, maybe it already kind of like grew in the sunlight, but now they're kind of like, uh, you know, putting that in the games. Uh, Imakoni's Doduo. Um, you know, I always wanted like the Imakuni cards when I was little. Um, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, you know, he was in the original Game Boy games, like the Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy. So it was always cool getting to battle him. And I think he would use this Pokemon. I can't remember, but it's, this one can't be played in tournaments because I mean, if you look at it, it's really silly. Um, the ability when this Pokemon retreats, throw it away. <laughs> Um, the attack, you have to, you have to sing a song and, you know, whenever you stop it is 30 damage. So, I mean, it's pretty, pretty funny and everything. Um, and then finally here comes team rocket. So basically a town map, except it's a supporter and it's going to force your opponent to play with their cards face up. So, I mean, I guess if greedy die becomes really broken or huge or something, this would be good, but otherwise it's just kind of fan service. And then, uh, you know, lastly we have, uh, a bunch of these promos here that are also going to be in our evolution set. Um, we see like Mega Slowbro, pretty interesting, 100 damage. It confuses itself, but then it does 100 more damage. So kind of like that Machamp break we saw. Uh, I'm glad to see that it has a Spirit Link, pretty cool. Surfing Pikachu, I'm really excited about. I hope they do some of the other ones like Flying Pikachu. Um, I think there were a few other ones, Birthday Pikachu. It'd be pretty cool. Maybe the the entire Pikachu World Collection as like a reprint or something. And then gym badge. Um, I hope we get these. You know, there's eight of them. They're really there for collector's reasons. You know, flip a coin until you get tells for each one, draw a card. So, I mean, I guess if you keep flipping heads, it's really good. But otherwise, probably not. But they do look cool. I mean, there's all the badges. I mean, when I was little, I'm sure when a lot of players were little, they wanted to collect the gym badges from, like, the Pokemon League. So, I mean, this is kind of a way to kind of, uh, you know, relive those memories and throw back and everything. And a lot of new players, I mean, it's pretty cool. They can... Uh, you know, experience that as well. And then lastly, I like that there's hollow energies. I hope, you know, I hope they put them in the packs. Um, I know in the original base set, I think there were like 10 or 11 cards in the set, maybe 11 in a booster pack. Um, you would always get an energy, you know, sometimes you would get uh, like two energy, which is kind of disappointing. But I mean, if they're hollow energy, that's another story. And we are seeing a uh, retro version of the fairy energy, and it's also hollow. So as well as the metal and dark, of course. So um, you know, here's the hoping that they kind of put those in um, our evolution set and hopefully they'll be relatively easy to pull. So, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope, um, you know, I didn't bore you too much. I know it was a pretty long set review. Uh, I was trying to keep it short, but it's pretty fun getting to look at these cards, talk about the history behind them. Um, and as you can mention, or as uh, you can see, Poke Beach kind of mentioned what wasn't reprinted. So, you know, stuff like uh, the Alakazam, the Blastoise, Clefairy doll, computer search, stuff like that. So um, some stuff just wasn't reprinted. I hope they make another set, like a second Evolutions or, you know, like a mini set with the other stuff, but you never know. Um, but that's going to do it, guys. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. And again, I know it wasn't too professional, but I, uh, you know, I thought I should just kind of go over this to give you guys, you know, a little bit of an idea of what this set is going to have in it, my take on it. You know, in general, I think it's a great set. Um, I'm going to buy a booster box and probably not open it because I think it'll be worth a lot of money one day. I think it's just awesome for collector's value. Um, but yeah, you know, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Be sure to, uh, you know, check out our website, Top Dick Nation. I'm just about done with, you know, making some big changes to make, uh, make it better for newer players and everything. I'm adding some guides and, you know, a deck list database. So if you're looking to build a deck, you know, check it out pretty soon. But in the meantime, I will catch you guys in the next video. This has been Zach with Top Dick Nation. And yeah, until then.